My name is Agata Ulanowska. I'm textile and agile archaeologist from the Faculty of Archaeology, University of Warsaw. Today I'm again assisted by our student, Aleksandra Franczak. Hello. Today we are going to talk about weaving. This video is the third video in the series and it is made by the educational project Artifacts, Creativity, Technology and Skills from Prehistory to Classical Period in Greece, funded by the 4EU Plus Alliance and Erasmus Plus project. Weaving is one of the oldest techniques for textile making, but not the oldest one. Uh, its beginnings can be dated back to the 6th millennium BCE or even earlier. For weaving, we need two systems of threads, warp, which is always stretched and tension, and weft, which is always elastic. We also need a loom. Loom is a machine which makes weaving mechanized by providing the mechanism for shed changes. There were very different types of looms, but all are constructed to the same mechanical principle. That is, they have the device and their construction allows for mechanized shape changing. Here, what you can see is just a weaving frame, which has been transferred into the loom with a shed bar made by a stick and handles. So you can see that uh, one shed is open by raising the handles, whereas the other one is made by um, raising the handle bar. And we can transfer easily the weft through the warp threads and do that again using handles. This is the warp weighted loom. The warp weighted loom was one of the types of large looms that were for sure used in Bronze Age Greece. And actually, this is the only type which is well attested archaeologically. We are not sure what was the construction of the warp weighted loom in Bronze Age Greece, but presumably it could not have been much different from the example we can hear. It could be either leaning towards the wall like this one, or it could be a freestanding construction. But generally, what weighted loom is a very simple tool. It's made of a frame with upright, with cloth beam, with shed bar, and with handle bar, which transfers the back layer of warp threads to the front and back. What is very important is that the warp threads on the warp weighted loom are tensioned by loom weights, which provide the correct tension for the entire textile. And the loom weights, which you can see here, are copies of the loom weights from the Minan site of Sisi on Crete. In Bronze Age Greece, there was a variety of loom weight types. The ones which you can see here are copies of loom weights from actual site made by students of the Faculty of Archaeology, University of Warsaw. So we see here crescent shaped loom weight, which comes from Bronze Age Tyrants. We can see examples of um, cuboid loom weights, a small one and bigger one, which come from Crete. We have uh, nice copies of pyramidal truncated loom weights which come from Paleka straw. And then we have um, copies of spherical loom weights uh, which were also used um, on Crete. Um, a special type of tools which can be used as loom weights are spools. And these are copies of larger spools from Tyrans. And finally, we can see three variants of canonical minon loom weights, which are called discoidal loom weights. These loom weights have been transferred from Crete to the southern Aegean um, together with the warp weighted loom technology and most likely with female weavers. Due to experimental research undertaken by the Center for Textile Research in Copenhagen, we know what parameters um, of loom weights uh, have an impact on the qualities of the woven textile. And these are uh, mass and thickness. So loom weights which are thicker, such as those examples here, will um, 
be enhancing producing textiles which are either balanced or even weft face, that is, that there are more weft threads per centimeter than the warps ones. While a discoidal loom weights, which are very thin, will be resulting in textiles which are more warp faced, like the one um, which you can see beneath these loom weights. What is also interesting is the soundscape of the warp weighted loom. Let us hear for a while what kind of sounds are produced during weaving. Alexandra, you were doing really quite well. However, I have to notice and observe that the edges are narrowing down. And this is actually a very typical mistake for the weavers who are beginning their work, but otherwise um, you were really very efficient in weaving. So I wonder what is your feeling about weaving? How do you feel while, while you are weaving? Well, I suppose I could call it a distressing activity because uh, when the warps are positioned, uh, you could uh, focus more on the manu manual aspect of the weaving, not only the planning of pattern. And it's uh, calming, the sound uh, is so rhythmic and it's easy to find the rhythm and just do it uh, pretty automatically. At the end of our video, we would like to show you yet another loom. This loom is called Rigid Haggle. It is a very simple loom which has been used for weaving bands. We do not have any evidence if this loom was actually used in Bronze Age Greece, but we are quite sure that there were some kind of band looms um, that must have been used by the Aegean societies. Uh, the oldest rigid adults are known from the Roman period. For um, today's demonstration of weaving, we have chosen a pattern inspired by a fresco from Akrotiri presenting adherence, but we decided to adjust its colors to the present day. When we weave on rigid huddle, we move this tool up and down. While doing this movement, we transfer the threads which are threaded through the slots back and forth. Threads which are in the holes are remaining still in the same position. So this type of uh, weaving is warp picking uh, because uh, we have to uh, pick the warps to uh, show a pattern. And the first thing we need to do uh, is open the shed and check if the warps are crossed. Otherwise, we would just undo the last row. The next, uh, we're gonna pick up the warps that need to be omitted to a pattern to appear. And now when we have this done, we just transfer the weft. It's important to leave the loop for a moment so we can uh, achieve an even band. And we just do the same thing once again. We pick up the warps. And then we just are passing the weft.